For this problem, we're going to do it all. We're going to do everything we've talked about with concavity, and we're also going to rely on stuff that we talked about before in the last section. They want local extrema, so local min, local max. Intervals of increasing, decreasing, concavity, inflection and critical points, intercepts and graphs. So sit back, this might be a little while with this video. Let's jump into it, okay? If we want to find the intervals of increasing and decreasing in critical points, we need the first derivative. This problem, we can just use the power rule. So let's jump into that. We're going to find all these points first. And then once you have all the points, it's actually going to be pretty easy to do the graph because we'll have so many points, we can just plot all them. And we'll have enough to give an overall idea of what the graph looks like based on our concavity increase and decreasing. First derivative, we're going to use the power rule. 3 comes down, multiplies by the negative 1 third. I get negative x squared plus 1. And then derivative of negative 2 thirds is 0. That's my first derivative. I want to set it equal to 0. This is not going to be undefined anywhere because of polynomials, so we're going to set it equal to zero to find the critical points. Okay, so when I set that equal, I have one minus x squared. You can factor it, use difference of squares. You can also move the x squared over. Either way, you're going to get plus or minus one as the two critical numbers. Okay, so the plus or minus one that you get, that's what you're going to use on a number line, and that will determine your intervals of uh, increasing and decreasing. Let's do that. We have negative 1 and 1. We're going to put on a number line and we're going to test uh, something that's less than negative 1. We can use negative 2. So let's use negative 2. We're going to use 0 in between negative 1 and 1 and we're going to use a 2. We're just testing that. Because we're talking about increase and decreasing, we're putting these test points into the first derivative. When we put that in, we have negative 2 squared is positive, but you have a minus. So we have a negative plus 1. Result is a negative number. Next, let's put 0 in here. Negative 0 squared is 0 plus 1. You get a positive. If you put 2 in here, you get negative 4 plus 1. Result is a negative. So I have uh, increasing. I'm going to put the interval right here. So increasing is going to be from negative 1 to 1 where it's plus. Decreasing is the middle one, uh, or the, the ones in the end rather, where you have a negative. That's going to be from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from 1 to infinity. Remember when you're doing these test numbers, I like to have them circled and kind of dropped underneath so you don't accidentally pick those for your uh, the intervals that you have here, they got to use the numbers on the number line, not your test numbers. Okay, so we've done all that, and then what we can also find is we can find relative max, relative min. If you have a negative going to positive, that's a relative min, and you have a max plus and minus, that's a increasing and decreasing top of a hill, means you have a max at one. So I'm going to do relative minimum first. Remember, you got to write these as coordinates because especially it's important in this section because you're going to be plotting these later when we do the graph. Relative min is going to occur at negative 1. Negative 1, I want to put back into the original function. And so when you do that, uh, you're going to get negative 4 thirds. Okay, so you can check that out later on a calculator. I have this worked out already. Uh, but you want to go ahead and verify. You could also use the table. On, uh, if you put this in for y1 and you put negative 1 in there, it'll also get you the uh, y value. Let's do the relative max. Relative max occurs at 1. Okay, so positive 1 we're going to put uh, in here. You get negative 1 third minus 2 thirds is negative 1 plus the 1. It's going to give you a 0. Okay, so relative max uh, is at 1 comma 0. We've done everything we can using the first derivative. Now, let's take a look at the second derivative. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Hopefully you have that down already. I'm going to continue and do the second derivative. It's the derivative of the first derivative. Okay, so second derivative, when we do that, we're going to get negative 2x by using the power rule. We're going to set that equal to 0. When we do, we get x is equal to 0. We don't know if that's an inflection point until we put it on the number line and verify it. you have a change in sign. 
Let's put that down there. We have a zero. We're going to do our test numbers. We can use negative one and one. Remember, these are going into the second derivative because you're looking at concavity. Negative one into here. That's going to give you a positive number. A one in there gives you negative number. So actually this does verify that in fact zero is going to be an inflection point. All right, so inflection point, okay, that's going to occur at zero. If you put zero into the original one because you want to find the actual point on the line itself, you're going to get negative two-thirds. All right, so zero and negative two-thirds. That's your one and only inflection point. That's another point that's on the line that we can plot later. Okay, then next we can talk about the concavity. So concave, we're going to do concave up first. That's where you got a plus sign over here. That's from negative infinity to zero. And then concave down occurs wherever you have a negative. That's from zero to infinity. Okay, so we're, we're getting closer to getting our answer. We found all these. Okay, so we found the intervals of increase and decrease in concavity, inflection, and critical numbers we found. Again, the critical numbers, found that earlier. Uh, and then now we want to find intercepts. Okay, let's find the, uh, we'll do that right here. Okay, intercepts. Okay, this is going to be a review from pre-calculus. For, for, for intercepts here, if you want to find the y-intercept, you're going to put in a 0 for x. Well, we've actually already done that already, and we've got 0 and negative 2 thirds. Okay, so that means that 0 and negative 2 thirds, that's going to be an inflection point, but also at the same time, it's going to be one of our intercepts. It's where it crosses the, the y axis. Next, let's take a look at the x intercept. x intercept is where the y is equal to 0. Now, if we take a look at what we've already found already, we see that there's already one point here. The relative max happens to be one of our intercepts. So I know that's going to be 1 comma 0. Now, is that going to be the only one? Now, I have a cube that's here. So if I just go ahead and set that equal to 0, I'm not going to be able to factor that. So this is one thing that you want to remember from pre-calculus. This is going back to using synthetic division to find the other zeros. So what I'm going to do first is I know I want to set this equal to 0, and I can use synthetic division for that. What I'm going to do to make this easier is I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 3, um, because then actually I can get whole number coefficients, and I'll make it easier when I do my synthetic division. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 3. Now, you don't have to do this in every single problem, um, but I wanted to show you this one just to show you that the reason why we actually did that in pre-calculus. Um, for those that, that did that, that section, this allows you to find the other zero. So I multiply that by 3. I get negative x cubed plus 3x minus 2. So I did it again, I just multiply both sides by 3. And you're allowed to do that since you got a zero on that side. In order to do synthetic, you have to have one of the zeros. We already have one of them. We have 1 comma 0. Okay, so we're going to put the 1 in the box. We're going to do negative 1. Remember that when you do synthetic, you have to make sure you have descending powers. If there's any powers missing, you've got to put in zero placekeepers. There's a zero squared that we have to put in there. So the second term is going to be a zero. Then three and negative two. Let's go through and do the synthetic division. First number drops down. You multiply and you put the result here. So you multiply, put the result right there. So you get negative one. You add that together. Negative one times one gives you negative one. Add 3, you get 2, multiply that, you get a 2, you get a remainder of 0 as to be expected there. What do we have left over when we do that? You're going to get negative x squared minus x plus 2. You're going to put the coefficients back in. It was a q. We did synthetic, drops the power down by 1. Now it's a square. We're going to set that equal to 0. To make this easier to factor, I'm going to clear out the negative in front by multiplying through by negative again. We get x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. And then we're going to do some factoring on this. And we'll get, we can do 1 and 2 there. The middle number has to be positive, so we'll do a plus 2 and a minus 1. Now the 1 is to be expected. We already got that already. Um, but when you set this equal to 0, we actually get a new one. We get another intercept of, I'm going to go ahead and add it right here negative 2 
comma zero is going to be another one. So that's a, an additional x-intercept that we would have gotten, and we got that by using the synthetic division. We now have to put all this together, and finally we're going to get to our answer, get to our graph. I hope you're still watching the video by now because I've been doing a lot of work for you, so hopefully you've stayed with me all the way through here to the very end. Let's put all this together onto single graph. Let's first plot points that we have. So first, I just found that negative 2 by going through all that synthetic division, so I got that one. Next, it also goes through 1 comma 0, then it also goes through 0 negative 2 thirds, which is going to be uh, right there. I also have these relative max and mins, and I ha uh, that's going to be put on there as well. I have negative 1 and negative 4 thirds. Negative 4 thirds is about negative 1 and 1 thirds, so a little bit more uh, so it's going to be about um, a little bit past negative 1, so somewhere about right here is where it will drop down to. You have a max that's at 1, 0. We already have that point that's right there. We're finally ready to fill in the rest of it. Now that we have these points here, we're going to use the increasing, decreasing, and concavity in order to do that. So we know that it's concave up from negative infinity to 0, which means the graph should be opening up uh, as we go to 0. So it'll come down and it's going to stop right there at that point. We can also use our increase and decreasing to get the same information. It's decreasing down to negative 1 and then it's increasing after that point. Now the rest of it is going to be concave down. Now the graph is not going to continue and keep going beyond this point because it's a relative max. So it's only going to go up to one, it's going to curve and go in the opposite direction. So this has to be curving down because it's concave down uh, right there. We also know it's a relative max right at that point. So it's decreasing, it's increasing between negative one and one, and it's decreasing again from one to infinity. We know it's a cube, so a cube it can have at most two turning points, so that does make sense with the graph that we have. So again, I put all this information together. Usually when you do this, you'll have more than enough information in order to draw the graph. This is what your final graph would look like.